Okay. Welcome back to Mass Effect 2. Um, and we have just uh, boarded our brand new Normandy SR2. The second version of the Normandy, if you will. She's bigger, faster, and better than ever in a lot of ways. And I think I'd like to take this episode to explore our new environment. Maybe talk to the crew members we have uh, acquired thus far. Uh, and, uh, you know, see what, we, what there is to see in our new ship. Um, and what's different, what's the same from Mass Effect 1. Uh, and, you know, also to sort of get a chat with some of our new folks, new characters, and old friends, because, you know, that's, that's really great to do, um, especially in a, in a Bioware game like this, where talking to people is so, so important to getting to know them um, as characters. And, uh, you know, I'm sure if you have seen any of my other Let's Plays, you know that I love the characters in Bioware games. Um, and if you're new here, welcome, and I hope you enjoy my channel. Uh, and uh, that's something that you will learn very quickly about me, is that I really, really like all the characters in these games, especially um, Bioware game. Bioware just does such a, a fantastic job writing really well-fleshed-out, three-dimensional characters uh, that have motivations that you can really understand and get your head around. They have great, cool backstories that are all really unique and interesting, uh, and that help explain, you know, the opinions that they hold and, and why they do the things they do, which I think is just fantastic. There are very few characters in Bioware games that I don't like uh, for that reason. Um, I really like all of them. Uh, and I really like befriending everybody because I'm a nice person and I think all these characters are great. Even if I don't necessarily agree with all of their opinions, I can understand usually where they're coming from and I want to be friends with them. And one of the great things about the Mass Effect games too is that um, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do it because it doesn't operate on any kind of approval system that's based on individual companions uh, approving or disapproving of your actions. Uh, like Dragon Age. Dragon Age is a little bit co more complicated in some ways in terms of befriending everybody just because they all operate on a certain kind of, on, on different kinds of approval systems. Where if you do certain actions that they don't like enough, in some cases, in, in extreme cases, some of them can even just tell you to screw off and leave. But in Mass Effect, that doesn't happen. Um, and in fact, because of the way the morality system works in Mass Effect, there are some characters that you can actually sway towards your morality one way or the other. For instance, if you've seen my Ma Mass Effect 1 Let's Play, you've seen the way that I was able to sort of nudge Garrus in a more paragony direction, even though he started out as kind of a wee baby renegade. Um, but because my shepherd is so paragon, she was able to sort of lecture him towards being a little bit more of a paragon himself. Uh, and so that's some, some of the things that I like to do in Mass Effect. Um, and I really enjoy that sort of the, the reputation and morality system uh, lets you do that in Mass Effect. Uh, so first off, uh, in our ship tour, uh, we're probably going to start up here. And the logical place to start, which is, of course, our bridge. Uh, and we're going to talk to our trusty pilot, Joker. Uh, of course, voiced as always by the... we got some lateral drip. The old Normandy never had that. <laughs> voiced by the indomitable Seth Green, as he was in Mass Effect 1, which is awesome. There are a number of really fantastic and... Uh, relatively well-known voice actors. Ah, the great endless expanse of space. <laughs> the hell there's, a, there's a fantastic number of, of really interesting voice actors, a lot of whom have a lot of geek cred. Uh, so I'll definitely be sure to point them out as we get along, as we go along. Of course, Cerberus, three-headed dog. How come it's only led by one guy? Um, of course, we have Seth Green voicing Joker, as he did in Mass Effect 1. In Mass Effect 1, we also had uh, Matriarch Benezia, voiced by uh, Marina Sirtis, who is, of course... Yeah, this is 98% of my job. I just watch buttons flash. Sometimes I press one. Okay, Joker. <laughs> and Marina Sirtis, of course, voiced Matriarch Benezia in Mass Effect 1. She's, of course, um, probably most well-known for her role in Star Trek The Next Generation as Counselor Deanna Troy. Um, Star Trek The Next Generation is my favorite Star Trek 
show, a series. Um, it's the one that I watched as a, as a kid. So um, I really, you know, like that geek cred. And, of course, Keith David voices uh, Captain Anderson. Uh, Keith David is an amazing, amazing actor. Uh, I especially like him in John Carpenter's The Thing, if you're big into that kind of uh, 80s horror movie kind of shtick. Um, so, yeah, let's talk to Joker. He has a lot to say, always. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. You. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. <laughs> Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. Aw, poor I Joker. I Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to rag on the new ship because it is a pretty cool new ship. Um, and, of course, the new dialogue, the dialogue wheel of Mass Effect is pretty straightforward. The top option is pretty much always your sort of paragon, super idealistic kind of viewpoint, uh, goody two-shoes. The bottom is usually more renegade more asshole-ish. And the middle is usually more neutral. So this, this time I'm going to take the, the neutral option. Enjoy it, Joker. If we're stuck here, we might as well let them pamper us. Exactly. Uh, does it breach uniform regs if I get that on a cruise shirt? Because this is my favorite, you have no choice, choice ever. <laughs> Technically, this is a civilian ship. I'm probably lucky you're still wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, I'll save that for the off-hour cameras. Have an AI watch me 24-7. Sure. <laughs> I love that line. Oh. I'm just lucky you're still wearing pants. Okay, uh, let's see what Edie has to say. Yes, Shepard. Oh, what's this room? As if I didn't know. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge where the navigator plots our FTL vectors and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about you, Edie, because you're our ship AI and that's weird. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Um, uh, your job? What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. That's I fair. I the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. Ah. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. So you're a spy. Cyber warfare. Cyber Tell warfare me. means things like viruses, right? In close range ship to ship combat. I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Scary. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. Yeah, that's really scary. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. Wow. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. Yeah, that is very impressive. <laughs> Sounds incredibly useful. Why isn't there someone like that on every warship? An organic operator cannot react quickly enough to changing circumstances or perform the necessary multitasking. This is a role that can only be filled by an artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are suspect. Well, it might have something to do with how an AI almost destroyed galactic civilization, just putting it out there. <laughs> uh, what about these monitoring devices? So you're definitely spying on us, right? The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Which ones? The elusive man has monitoring oh, I just devices said that. on board. He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. Okay. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. More functions. Restricted functions? Like what? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed. Some of my hardware is kept offline. Oh boy. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. So you don't even know everything that you can do. That's kind of creepy. Kind of creepy. What about another topic? Let's discuss something else. Ready. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about I you I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Uh, what's your, uh, what, what's, what's, where'd the name come from? Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Okay. Where, where are you located on the ship, precisely? Where's your hardware? Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. Ah, so downstairs. Uh, and what about you and Joker? How's that going? How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. 
Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. <laughs> let's discuss something else. Ready. Uh, well, yeah, let's talk about Cerberus. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Oop. Do you have a specific inquiry? Well, let's talk about the Normandy. How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. A block? What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. Fantastic. Okay, so let's try again. Resources. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities. I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Damn it. What about the structure? Let's learn about the structure. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. How many cells are there? I can bet what her answer is going to be. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? I have a block mm. that prevents me from answering that question. Shocking. All right, well, let's just get out. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Ooh, flight controls. All right, codex. We can maybe do some episodes that are just codex entries, too, again. Commander. So, how are things going? I assume everything's going well up here. I really want a chance to put the Normandy through her paces. I just have to trim up the drive output, and it'll be like we never lost her. Safety standards advise against manipulating drive settings while engines are powered and in use, Mr. Moreau. Commander, can we shut this thing off? I don't need it in my day-to-day. -day. We can mute it. If you don't want to hear it, turn the damn sound off. Well, it doesn't change anything. It's still watching. Like some creepy kid staring at the back of your head in comp side. You just want to punch him, but he's special and he sets fires or something. Okay, a little too far there, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Your problem, not mine. Thanks. I'll remember this. Yeah, you know. What about the good old days? Let's talk about the good old days, Joker. Ever think about the old Normandy and the trouble we got up to? <laughs> yeah, those seem like the good old days now, but come on, it, it was hell at the time. Geth, Saren, Sovereign, and then we got dumped. We're stuck in a weird place, sure, but back then it wasn't all sunshine and bunnies. Fair, but hey, what about those the old guys we used to run with? That was good crew, right? What happened to the rest of the old crew? I heard <clears> most <throat> survived. Almost did. Presley didn't. And the rest of us just sort of drifted apart. Ooh. The Alliance didn't care. I don't think they liked all the non-humans in your crew. That's because they're you assholes. Your team, Commander. With the Normandy destroyed and you gone, there wasn't much keeping us together. What about the mission? What do you think of our mission right now? So, how do you think we're doing? Well, the Normandy's not as ready as she could be. There's always more we could upgrade. Right, upgrades. As for the crew, you'd have to ask a, a people person. <laughs> well, I'm still going to ask you. What do you think about the people we're picking up? Well, about the ones you went out with last, I would never say anything against Miranda and expect to survive the reprisal. Jacob is way too nice a guy for the number of ways he knows how to kill people. It's just my opinion, though. There's really no need to go spreading it around. Fair enough. Goodbye. That's it for now. See you, Commander. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. What all we got here? Controls. More codex. All right. Codex. Do, 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 do. Welcome aboard, Commander. Hello, Yeoman Chambers. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. Well, the pleasure's all mine. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Okay. okay, Kelly. <laughs> Anything else? Well, let's uh, let's talk. Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. What's your job? What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Really? That seems like pretty basic stuff. <laughs> Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. 
That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. I see. So you're a head shrinker. You make sure the crew's mental health is sound. Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. I'm okay with that. I mean, this is a pretty high-pressure mission we're all on here, so sure. We're lucky to have someone with your skills, Kelly. Thank you, Shepard. What else would you like to know? Well, you know, what do you think of Cerberus? I mean, you know, they're pretty controversial. I don't like them very much, but I'd like to hear other people's opinion. This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests, advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. What about non-humans, though? They have a kind of a reputation for not liking them. It sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats, too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus ideals. That's quite the metaphor. Uh, I'm not going to say either of those things. Uh, I'm just going to say, ask her if she's happy. How do you, How do you feel like about it? being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the Elusive Man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. I appreciate your faith. Don't worry. We'll defeat the Collectors. I trust you implicitly. The moment I met you, I knew I could close my eyes, fall back, and you'd be there. Whoa there, getting a little bit intimate. Um, I would definitely, you know, I wouldn't drop you, that's for sure. Your trust is well placed, Kelly. I knew it would be. Thank you, Shepard. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Uh, no, that's good. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Uh, let's talk to Edie in this place here. What's this area of the ship? This is the Combat Information Center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. Cool. I also have a private terminal, which is right here, where I can view a lot of messages. I can check team status. I can also check my upgrades. Uh, upgrades are really important uh, a little bit later on. Um, also have advanced combat training and, of course, unread messages, which we have a lot of because it's the beginning of the game. Uh, most of this stuff is DLC related, but uh, this, uh, let's see here, message from Anderson, yeah, from Counselor Anderson. On the off chance that the rumors are true and you actually are alive, I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the Council, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Fair, fair. Definitely put that on my to-do list. Uh, Zaid Masani. This is a DLC thing. Uh, Shepard, we've reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems, and is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You will find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee. I've taken care of that, personally. Okay. Cool. We'll uh, recruit him. Lost contact with survey ship. Project Firewalker. This is also a DLC. Uh, Commander, the MSV Rosalie, a survey ship with Cerberus connections, has gone missing. The survey team was field testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planetside Exploration Rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Case and Dr. Robert Oloy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship, her survey team, and the doctors. The MSV Rosalie was last seen near planet Ziona, uh, Alista Ismar Frontier. So we'll probably do that too at some point. Normandy crash site located. Once again, DLC stuff. From Admiral Hackett, our buddy Admiral Hackett. Our scans in the Amata system have turned up something we thought you should see, the final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. We thought this news might be important to you, but we also have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like to honor the Normandy with a monument to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. 
We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to walk on the site. There are still 20 crew members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any signs of these lost crewmen, we ask that you report to the Alliance so that those heroes' families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. That'll be a gut-wrenching experience, and we'll also do that later. Uh, oh yeah, this is an assault armor. Cerberus assault armor. Our armor technicians heard you were back in action and insisted that you should be appropriately equipped. They put together a package that I had delivered to the Normandy. You'll find it in your personal quarters. Fortunately, we know your size. That's not creepy at all, Mr. Elusive Man. Collector rifle and armor. Our researchers have been working with captured collector technology for some time now. They've developed an experimental armor suit in your size and an assault rifle that the techs say should take a standard thermal clip. I had the items delivered to the Normandy's armory. Good hunting. Yeah, fun. Overlord. One of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Aite Typhon system in the Phoenix Massing Cluster. Please use care in this matter. I suppose. Arc Projector. Hey, this is a fun weapon. We recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts in the Skillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to chase anything down. Well, that's a relief. Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against a Geth scouting party and credited their success to a new advanced electrical attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. The weapon is called an arc projector. I sent it to the Normandy's armory so you can examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's gone through plenty of tests that indicate it overloads kinetic barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well, but laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works. Now we want to see what it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. And, of course, our uh, final DLC companion, Kasumi Goto. At great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief, Kasumi Goto, and convinced her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her, and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequaled at stealth and infiltration, and her skills will prove invaluable in your mission. Travel to the Zakara Ward on the Citadel. There you will find a special ad terminal that, offer that differs from the usual... Input the password, silence is golden, to begin the rendezvous. Fair. Alright, so that's our private messages. And we've got a bunch more stuff to do. That should be fun. And also a bunch of new codex entries. Um, but uh, we're about out of time, so in the next episode, we will continue our little tour of the new Normandy and talking to folks. So yeah, I hope you'll join us. As always, if you like what you see, please hit the like button, uh, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, and we'll see you in the next episode. Later.